You are a stout crowd. Thank you for showing up. We have two other great sessions going on right now. They decided to put all the best ones at the same time. So you've got one of the best right here. And I think as far as audiences go, that means you are one of the best. So thank you for coming. I'm going to take the first half of the presentation and talk about the real meaning, the true meaning of telepresence, which comes down to telepresence values. And I'll show you what that is in just a moment. John will follow up putting some real flesh and bones on these more philosophical and theoretical things that I'm going to talk about. Uh, I come out of a, of a higher ed. I worked at Texas A&M for a long time, so I'm, I'm real big on egg-headed ideas. Without further ado, the question, what is this thing called telepresence? In the um, expert panels that we just had, there was some talk about this, and I'm going to touch on what they said in just a moment. But let me ask first. Who in here considers himself old school where it comes to video conferencing and such? All right, we've got a couple. We got, yeah, you're old school, Carla. You're old, you're old. And some new school folks. Right, you're neither, right? You're in the middle? <laughs> right, okay. Well, for the old school folks, telepresence meant this immersive experience uh, coming into a big room that was just so to make it feel like you're in the same room. To people newer to the industry, telepresence now means whatever Cisco says it means. And so it used to be that a room like this was called telepresence. That's what telepresence was. Now it's immersive telepresence. And like this, this is from DVE, similar kind of thing, uh, like this. You've seen, probably seen pictures of all of these before if, if you've been browsing around the internet at all or visiting rooms. This is one of the older, Teliris, I think is how it's pronounced, is one of the first entries into, the, into this immersive telepresence market. Then we began to see personal telepresence. The beginning of the overloading of the term telepresence. Um, then we've got robotic telepresence. This is the AnyBots version. How many of you seen one of these in face to face? I think there was one here last year, right? I guess, right? That was kind of fun. It's kind of cool to see. Uh, this has a, a monitor right in the middle of it, so you look, you can look them in, look them in the eye. You can see them, but mostly the idea is that it's mobile by itself. Somebody on the other side of the, somebody who's in the picture who's showing their face, can drive that little guy around. It's got some obstacle avoidance built into it. And it's another, as we, as we get a little bit further on, I'm going to show you how that applies, how it really is telepresence by the definition that I have. And by the way, the definition that I have was made so that it included all these things that are called telepresence. So uh, it's, it's a little bit of circular reasoning there, but I think you'll get what I'm talking about when you see it. So robotic telepresence, uh, I saw one of these last year, like I mentioned, and I spoke to the, the vendor. One of the applications he thought it would be good for is kids looking in on their elderly parents. I happen to be a member of a networking group up in Chicago, and one of the guys in my group is, uh, owns a company called Senior Helpers. They do non-medical home care for elderly, and I thought, this would be a great thing for him to know about. I told him about him, I showed him the gloss, and he said, Theo, I don't think the kids really want to see their parents sitting on the john. There are some human elements to the technology, for sure. Uh, here's another little guy. This one was called mobile telepresence. I call it robotic telepresence still, but it's the rovial version. This is more of a toy, I think, than anything. Uh, there's one other category nobody here has talked about, and that's plush telepresence. It's okay, you can laugh. It's funny. I don't have one of these guys, but they look awfully cute, and I, I think I'm going to get myself one if I, or make one if I can't find one. All right, so all of these things are called telepresence, and I'm here to try to make a little bit of sense out of this world that we've, that we've come into here now. So, what is it? I'm Theo Economides. I dispel mystery. I love teaching. I, my goal in life is to make that light bulb of understanding come on. So that's why I'm here today. So in, over in the expert panel, uh, Tony Alonzo said that telepresence now means high definition. Immersive telepresence means that thing that was in those pictures a moment ago. Well, that's OK. Uh, going on, Tim Rupert called immersive telepresence the ultimate experience. I think he should have gone further, the ultimate experience of what? I'm going to tell you in a moment. 
Stephen Karapetkov, I hope I got that right. Uh, he said when he, when Polycom and Cisco met to talk about what telepresence is, he said they came out of it with the jury still out on what immersive means. Then he went on to say that you can increase immersiveness in a variety of ways. I think that's key to where I'm going with this. Wikipedia talks about telepresence as the appearance of being present. And similarly, kind of on the other side, stimuli that make it feel as if, be, as if you are present at the other location. So on one, it feels like the person who's not here is here. On the other one, it feels like I'm the person who's not there, but it feels like I'm there. Kind of the yin and yang of that experience. All right. So there's a lot of different ways to talk about this. Maybe if we go back to the origins of telepresence, we can get a little better handle on this. So where did it start? I mentioned Telerus. There were a number of other vendors, manufacturers involved in some of the earlier systems. But really, telepresence started much earlier than that. In fact, it started a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Here we have Princess Leia being telepresent by some of these definitions. Although this is only one way, it was kind of the early version of telepresence, or maybe it's just the mobile version. I'm not sure uh, which we would categorize it as today. But jump ahead a few years in our time, software upgrades, better ideas, but in the Star Wars universe, it's actually jumping back a few generations, and you get to this, which is someone almost physically present right there. Telepresence has captured our imagination for years, and we're finally kind of getting around to making this happen. So let's talk about what telepresence is for the sake of my presentation here today. Technology that makes it feel like being there. And that can be from both sides of the side. It, it makes other people feel like those people are here, and it also makes it feel like I'm there. I think that's general enough, telepresent, or better. What I like to think about when I think of telepresence is the gold standard is a face-to-face -face meeting, right? That's what we're trying to emulate with this technology, a face-to-face -face meeting. We think that is as good as it gets. It's not so. Telepresence, in my definition, can take that further. You can have meetings that are better than being face-to-face. -face. Now, how? Collaborative practice attorneys, they're mediators. They help to make divorce as painless as possible without getting into litigation. So there's a lot of negotiation. There's a lot of gathering everybody around the table to agree, agree and disagree and work things out. So there was the husband and the wife. Husband's attorney, wife's attorney, sitting down at the same table to address these issues and try to work out as amicable a situation as possible. Well, they get there. The wife stands up, pulls the gun out of her purse, and shoots her now ex-husband. I don't think the wound was fatal. But you know, in so much of this industry, we're trying to bridge the gap of distance and bring people together. There are times when you don't want to do that. This would be one of them. So I'm saying telepresence can emulate face-to-face -face meetings, but it can also be better than face-to-face -face meetings. My colleague Ben Feynman at Internet2, some of you probably know him, came up with this graphic to talk about telepresence values, the things that make telepresence, telepresence. Visual presence, making it look like people are actually present, how big they are, how big are the screens, does it look like I'm in the same room as you, or actually more, does it look like I'm the same person, am I life-sized? Eye contact, we know eye contact is critical to human communication, so how well is that emulated in a telepresence situation? Visual congruence, does the room at that end look like the room at this end? Does uh, the paint, the signage, does it all look consistent as if we were in the same room? Spatial, uh, spatial audio for audio presence, does it sound like my voice is coming from my lips or does it sound like it's coming from these speakers or somewhere in between? And then finally, High quality audio. I think, again, we all know that the pr primary method of human communication, what's important, what has to be there, is audio. We find it very difficult to communicate when the audio is bad. 
The video's bad, we can get by. The better all of these are, the more immersive the experience is. The better these are, the more we are like what Stephen Karapetov just said. Now, I add one more aspect to this. The overall experience. I'm going to get a little bit deeper into this. But this talks about what is the overall feel? Is it really like being there? Is it better than reality? How's the fatigue level? Is it better or worse than being face to face? And then finally, an idea called experience realms, which I'll touch on as I get there in just a moment. So going through these, don't need to spend too much time on these. I think these are concepts that we have a good feel for already. But visual presence. Here's the Polycom RPX room. Notice the people here kind of look like the same size as the people that are here in this room. So I think this does a pretty good job of that visual presence element. They're high definition. The camera shot works so that it looks like those people are at the same level and all that. Screen position and lighting all works together in a certain way for this telepresence value. Uh, camera angles. If the camera angle isn't eye to eye, then we're not kind of seeing people the way we're used to seeing them face to face. Uh, if it's right on, we look like this. If it's a little bit high or a little bit low, then we have this impression that the person's talking down to us or that we're looking up to them. And this, these pictures are from back in my Texas A&M days where there was uh, education going on and you're a professor. You need to decide how are you going to present yourself to your students? Are you going to be elevated? Are you going to be on the same level? These are the issues of camera. Looking down on people like that, nobody really likes to be looked down on. Eye contact don't really need to say too much more about this, but how well does a solution provide eye contact? Uh, you can get things that look like they're eye to eye. You can get things that look like they're not eye to eye. My, my netbook, if I'm sitting at it with this little webcam right here, shoots right up my nose. I've got to look down and then I look kind of funny. Same thing with a camera perched on top of a monitor. You get to see if the person has acne on their forehead or not. Similarly, for eye contact, here's the Polycom room again, and the way that they position their camera for eye contact is they put it right here in the middle of the screen, right at the eye level of that front row of people. Uh, visual congruence. Here in this DVE room, I don't think this one does too well with visual congruence, because it looks like there's this window where you're seeing the people. It doesn't feel like in the same room to me. So a lot of different ways that this stuff can be done. With the Cisco room, it does that pretty well, although this bright bezel it's kind of uh, unusual for what it would be like to be in a real room. Visual congruence we touched on before. The spatial audio. This is my old colleague, Carl. His mouth is there. The speakers are there. It's not like real life. But when you get speakers placed behind the screens and stereo microphones so that it sounds like we're talking, the voice is coming from the person who's speaking, it makes it more real. Audio quality, the better the echo cancellation, the crisper, cleaner the audio is, the better, the more immersive the experience is. So let's talk about the experience briefly here. Here's a, a, a 3D DVE telepresence. I haven't, have anybody seen this face to face? I think they were at uh, was it Infocom or something like that recently. It looks really cool, I, I can't wait to see it. But three dimensional aspects add to, or can add to that feeling of being there. When I went to the NAB conference back in April, 3D was all over the place with movie producers, technology for TV and movies and such. So we're going to see it not before too long be pretty standard in our industry, I think. But it's hard to qualify, can't quantify. How do you quantify an experience? And I'd like you to come away from this to be able to say, I've got these six categories that I'm going to judge my telepresence room with. How good is the spatial audio? How good is the audio clarity? How good is all of the other aspects? How good is the experience? Well, maybe poetry is the way.